videos are the future. Now you might say that's a painfully obvious statement because we've been using videos for decades now, but let's look at this past year alone. We've been making compromises in school and in work to put whatever we can online. Now the reason I bring up the subject that I'm sure no one is sick of hearing yet is that going online was not an easy transition for anyone who is not tech savvy. And if you fall under that category, this video is directed to you. So the purpose of this video is to demonstrate and inform you of the benefits of using video editing in work, school, and just entertainment. The first side benefit of video editing, you don't have to do everything in one take, which means you can wear pajamas from the start of the video and end wearing something you probably should have been wearing at the start of the video. Thanks to screen capturing software, you don't even have to show your face. This allows your viewers to focus more on the material that you're presenting rather than the zit that's on your forehead. The main benefit I want to be focusing on are the uses that videos and video editing can have with all your tasks or assignments in school or work. So let's take a look at YouTube for some examples that help illustrate the types of videos that we might need to be making ourselves. While on my daily browse of the infinite supply of distraction that is YouTube, I happened across this video that had to do with architecture in London. What the author of this YouTube video did was provide information in a historical and chronological format so as to help the viewers to understand the events that transpired. He used old as well as current photos and videos of the locations as well as stories from the people that were involved to help illustrate and demonstrate the story. Resident Ivy Hodge, a 56-year-old cake decorator, lit a match to light her gas stove and was surprised by an explosion that blew her across the room and took out the load-bearing walls. This caused a domino effect, with the four flats above collapsing. Their weight, in turn, caused the ones below to collapse. So here we can see good uses of pictures and videos to help inform the viewers. We can apply this ourselves whenever we hope to inform our viewers of something. Something similar was done in my job at a plasma donation center. What we used to do is have staff meetings every month, and that would mean all of us gathering together. But since the events that transpired this year, our management has moved it to a more online format in the form of a video. This video then covered the information that needed to be spread to everyone throughout the center. This also allowed them to not have to pick a specific time during the day or night that we can all meet together and set aside that time. Instead, now we're able to watch it at our own leisure. This next use of information in video is one that we are all very familiar with and we use YouTube for a lot, and that is through tutorials. You remember those early days of YouTube tutorials, don't you? In any case, tutorials have come a long way since then and they provide a huge plethora of information across all aspects we could ever ask for. And those are good examples that we can use whenever we're going to make our own videos. got dark there. Videos are also a great medium for persuasion. Assignments like persuasion essays fit very well in video formats because you can easily lay out all the information that you hope to use to persuade your audience. This particular YouTuber does lots of videos on music and music related topics. This specific video in particular focuses on autotune. While this can double as an informative video essay, this persuades the audience to take a stance on what autotune is, how we should think about autotune, as well as decide if the music that he uses autotune has any less value than normal. You can pitch correct things in real time on stage and you'll never even know the difference. Literally, the only way to know that someone isn't being corrected live on stage is if there isn't a microphone, which is kind of an ethical dilemma. If you pay money to see someone sing live and you hear a processed version of their voice, have you really heard them sing live? If a tree falls in the woods and someone autotunes it, does it make a sound? This video, could easily fit into any audio file or just a written essay. Yet, by being in video form, it adds a whole lot more options and opportunities to demonstrate what point he's trying to make, as well as give live examples, not just through visual aids, but sound aids. Even a research paper could be translated into a video. Danny Gonzalez recently made a video where he tried to make his own song viral on TikTok. He provided theories, hypotheses, and tested multiple aspects to see what he could do to make his own song viral. 
He considered discrepancies and issues that might interfere with his research. His resulting findings he put into a video, which could be viewed as a simple research paper in video form. This just goes to show that any research paper or speech can translate into a video, and with the potential entertainment value, it makes for the whole presentation to be a lot more enjoyable. Okay, so entertainment is pretty obvious when it comes to video editing, but it's sort of the umbrella that encompasses all of the previously mentioned aspects. Putting your work task or school assignment into a video is sort of like adding salt to your bland food. The thing would normally be pretty boring by itself, but by putting some sort of entertainment value into it in its video form allows for it to be much more memorable and captivating for those who would need to watch it. These are some of the many benefits for using video editing in school or work. And if you're not sure how to approach this whole thing, if you're not tech savvy, I guess just look up a tutorial.